Hello, everybody. This is Descent Waves bringing you another mini episode. This week, we're doing Green Day American Idiot versus Father of All Motherfuckers. Yeah, I'm Dominic, I'm... and Trix is here today. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, uh, Ritalin is sick. Ritalin is not... sick. That... It's not the uh, COVID 19. No, um, this is—I mean, this is kind of planned anyway. The Riddle yeah. would never want to do Father of All Motherfuckers, so knowing he would not be here, we were gonna do it, and then he was sick anyway. So how things work out? out. But yeah, I've been wanting to do Father of All for a hot minute now. We're finally here. Um, this is interesting. I, I, we've we've kind of talked about it on air a little bit and in chat a bit. Um, yeah, just get out right at the gate here. Father of all motherfuckers is bad. Yeah. Like, there's barely anything about it. I think it is more interesting to talk about than, say, Wolf Parade, but... Yeah, because it's got the uh, LSD element to it. I would even put it above LSD, because I think LSD was just like bad experimentation where this is just disappointing because it's so generic. Fair, fair, yeah. Like I was I was thinking about if the if Father of All Motherfuckers was like an indie band's second album, it might be alright. It'd be pretty decent. Like I, I would give it a chance. Right. And maybe that just says a lot about me and you or expectations and how weird they can be. But this is Green Day's thirteenth album. They've been around since what? Late 80s. Like I'm as old as Dookie, basically. Like I had a I had a Dookie phase in college, like a lot of people did. And American Idiot is an important album in my life. And I'm not, I'm not gonna say that's one of my favorites. It's not one that I am I don't know. It's a weird thing we'll get into in a minute here. Uh, I have seen Green Day live. I don't know before I saw them on their um, tour for uh, what was their second concept album? Twenty uh, First Century Break. Yeah, pretty and, much anything uh, since American Idiot. Yeah. I... What was it? Yeah, I, I I thought they were pretty live. Um, but I don't eat it out of his to be. But out there what was it i i don't know if he was just like out speed he was to me i was like super young when... okay yeah i mean billy joe armstrong has been in and out of rehab a bit so i don't know yeah i don't know the whole timeline but uh yeah so for me most things past american idiot i don't really care about i've found that green day has had trouble being relevant pretty much ever since then. I think that's kind of the opinion of a lot of people. Like, I've tried giving um, 21st Century a chance. I've given Revolution Radio a chance. I kind of skipped the Uno, Dos, Trey thing because that seemed like a lot, but at some point I'll probably yeah, give that a chance. Like, they they should have put that out. Was it? They they should have put that thing out as like one curated album. That'd be interesting. I mean, like I like the idea of like, hey, we're gonna do three albums. We're just gonna put all this content um out there. And I like yeah, that idea. I but do like, think they're like the only, they're the only band to put out like a triple. Album. Yeah, <clears throat> but um, I don't. Know. I it's it's kind of like the the Ace of Butterfield effect for me where. I really like Aza Butterfield as an actor, and I think he's been in some really amazing movies like Hugo, and I like him in Ender's Game. And then he just takes a lot of movies that I don't really care about, and I don't understand why he's picking those movies, or he's getting those movies when there's so much better stuff, I think, that he could be doing. I mean, acting is acting. You kind of get what you, you take what you get when you have the opportunity to, but it kind of feels like there's a little bit of um, a disconnect with kind of the 
thing that's presented to you and then like the audience has an expectation and then you go and do something else and then it's not as exciting and that's you know that's the way that yeah. the world works sometimes but here with green day the path from american idiot to father of all motherfuckers is like a band going in reverse where their socially conscious punk rock album happened over 15 years ago and just doing the most generic stadium rock shit yeah we're gonna have to talk about the advertising to it the nhl stuff i i i didn't know that i'm just talking about like one ad that it was like no swedish producers whatever i didn't hear about this go into it oh well they put out an ad for the album it was like um all, all rock. Um, it's let me see if I can find the ad. But it's and just from like what a... you find it. Um, from what I've seen, they played at the Video Game Awards last year. They are, they did um some stuff for the game Beat Saber, Beat Saber that um I guess was like custom content. So they've really tried to market this. The um, the song uh, Fire Ready Aim is like the NHL like opening song now or something and Father of All is also played quite a bit at the NHL and like their advertising and stuff. So they've got some money behind this. Don't know why, but they got a lot of money and interest in this album. I am posting the ad in the uh, Discord. Okay, it's, uh... it's a sign. No features, no Swedish song, no trap beats, 100% pure uncut rock. <clears throat> oh boy. Um, and the thing is, all of these songs that are on Father of All Motherfuckers are as good, if not slightly worse, than the worst song on American Idiot. Which, which, ooh, um, oh. Hot take an extraordinary girl. Um, okay, maybe not the worst song in American Idiot because Extraordinary Girl is one of my least favorites. She's a Rebel is also one of my least favorites. I'm thinking yeah, about cool. Letter Bomb territory. Oh, Letter Bomb is my favorite. I don't like uh, Letter Bomb is like bottom three for me. It's like above yeah. Extraordinary Girl and She's a Rebel, but it's like right there. I, I, I like the just uh, like the rip, like as a good, as a was that you cutting out? I, I just like it as like a musician. It's like just a good riff, I think. I, yeah. I mean, Letter Bomb's okay. I and mean, I think the best song, um, which for sounding like Green Day is on I'm a Teenage Teenager, or I was a Teenage Teenager or whatever. I think that's like the most Green Day sounding song. So the lyrics are atrocious. The, drugs. the lyrics are atrocious. Um, I don't want to freak anybody out. Uh, does anybody have the drugs? Like, that's literally lines from the fucking song. But um, the rest of the song, the beat and the composition is, you know, on par with, like, a letter bomb, and that's a really low bar to set, I think, for me. And I, like, I'm just thinking about, like, is this, like, a contractual thing? Is this... I don't understand why this album was made like this, because... Like, it would be all be stuff. This, this was made 15 years ago, it would all be cut from American Idiot. Because American Idiot, you know, better or worse, is one of the most enduring punk, pop punk, uh, pop punk albums for a reason. It is um, inspirational to bands like AFI and to a lot of punk, pop punk bands going forward. I mean, you know, Blink 182 and Green Day both have had a lot of influence in the genre. De- definitely they're like say it just anyway the reason the reason why we're doing this is because for whatever reason green day decided to have their um cover for father of all motherfuckers being the american idiot album just cropped and like recontextualized a little bit it's like a bit scruffier um still the heart with the hand grenade picture but like really cropped the skin tone's been changed. There's a fucking unicorn on it now because they gotta censor motherfuckers. It's like 
shitting all over everything that made that cover great because I think that's a great cover. Yeah, it, it is. Like the actual content of American Idiot itself now, like fifteen years later, is kind of complex for me to talk about because American uh, American Idiot is probably the first album I was aware of as like a, a thing of new music coming out. I was in like fourth uh, grade. Was it? I was three or four when the album came out. <laughs> I was in fourth grade, and I remember there was a kid in my class who wore an American Idiot shirt, like, all the time. So, like, I was aware of, like, the name and Green Day, and I had, like, never really heard of them. And I played, like, Tony Hawk and stuff, so I knew, like, kind of what new music was, but, like, even then, that kind of stuff was kind of older. You know, like, that was 90s music. This was, like, modern shit happening, you know? This was 2004. Yes. So, that album has always been kind of there. Um, it was there when I picked up uh, Tony Hawk's American Skateland on DS years later, and like Holiday um, was on the soundtrack, and that was huge for me. But it's hard to, because the whole concept of like American Idiot is that it's like trying to reach the kind of the the youth of the time growing up with like the Iraq War, and George Bush yeah. in the presidency, it's and like the whole, you know, don't vote for Bush. Yeah. Very, it's very 2004, you know, focusing on oil and the big corporations pushing out the small uh, local businesses, kind of the stuff that was talked about a lot back then. But even then, I think the problem with American Idiot is that Billy Joe was like 35. They all were kind of like yeah. not teenagers trying to reach teenagers, right? Yeah, how do you do, fellow kids? <laughs> You know, they're, they're 80s teens, 90s teens trying to reach the mid-2000s. And being, like, 9 or 10 at that time, I don't super connect with that. Like, I, I always think of, like, American Idiot as kind of, like, my fictional older brother's kind of album that I just listened to kind of later on. Yeah. I was a little bit too young. But even then, listening to all of it now, it kind of has a little bit of vibe of that, hey, fellow teens, how are you? I am just like you. Right? Yeah, it definitely does. I think there's a lot of really basic and kind of inane imagery with like the Jesus of Suburbia stuff and kind of the reliance on Christian I, imagery I, to kind of drive meaning. And oh my god, there were so many li- stolen riffs on this album. Really? Like, like what? Yeah, like um, the. Um... City of the Damned, I think it is, is uh, just Summer of 69. Okay, interesting. I never, never thought of that. Yeah, um, they are. The, they, they're not original. Not surprising to me. Um, I'm going to say, but even with all of that, Father of All Motherfuckers is basically trying to do the same thing but the lyrics are even worse. And there's no like story or anything to reach people with. It's just a bunch of songs. Like I think the Green Day quote, it's about like this album is about like the lifestyle of not giving a fuck. Which yeah, yeah the, it, it sounds like that. Like didn't give a fuck about the lyrics or the the, the tracks. It's in if you if you contextualize it that way, it's honestly kind of like the most punk rock thing they've done. <laughs> Sure, yeah, but it sounds like everything they've done since American Idiot. They really, even American Idiot has um some of that like really throwbacky stuff that they try to do sometimes. Yeah, because they got Rock and Roll Girlfriend, which I think is one of the worst parts of the album. It's it's all right, but like throwing that in at the last minute there in Homecoming is really weird. Yeah, Home Homecoming just is all over the place, like. Uh, yeah, let's have just a uh, a seven minute epic of just <clears throat> with a character committing suicide. And... It's metaphorical suicide. It's a symbol. I think Saint Jimmy was supposed to be Jesus all along. Like it was like a part of his ment- uh, uh, part of his brain or something. The the, the story yeah. in American Idiot also is not super great because it's a lot of introductions of characters and a couple songs where they do things, and then the rest of it is like coming home, and that's like half the album. Yes. There's actually very little plot in the story. Oh, 
Yeah, but um, let's see. Take the money and crawl, and father of all, is like a straight up like Elvisy song, which is they've gone full like regression back to the fifties and sixties rock, which yeah, you know I understand a lot of bands do that, but it feels like a, a kind of a crutch for Green Day where they can't escape it. They always got to put it somewhere, even in like this really meaningful punk pop punk i can't say the fucking word pop punk but pop punk rock opera they gotta slide it in there and kind of just like kind of take the meaning out of it a little bit by like see we like old stuff and we're hip in that way too and i'd also like to take just an aside that i noticed when i first looked at the album uh, the album is called Father of All Motherfuckers, um, but there's only two explicit songs on the album. Yeah. There's more explicit stuff in American Idiot, for example. Yeah. And like, even if not literally, but like thematically. Um, I also, I, like, we... What was that? Go ahead. I, I was going to say, um, I was a teenage teenager. Uh, there... Uh, title is pretty much directly ripped from I was a teen uh, against me as I was a teen yeah uh, it was there was something else about against me that I was remembering that they did in father of all oh where is it there is a line um I'm gonna flip through my pages real quick hold on a sec Yeah, I got really lazy about writing here, so it's all weird writing. No, but uh, Meet Me on the Roof, they talk about how the singer is hanging with the jocks. And I was just thinking about that yeah. song in Transgender Dysphoria Blues, where it's kind of the same line. It's the same topic. It's called, it's called Hanging with the Jocks. Hanging with the Jocks. I was just like, oh, weird. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Um, let's see. We talked about Father of All the Song being a white stripe song. Yeah. Like a first like first thirty seconds, I'm like, well, what white stripe song is this? A uh, Fire Ready Aim reminds me of that um I'm a Rebel Just for Kicks song. I don't know what that what that song is called, but it's been like on the radio everywhere, if you know what I mean. I, I do not actually. Um, let me let me try to find this real quick. Um I don't know, say something real quick. Um these um on on the topic of teenage teenager i have the lyrics uh pulled up and they are fucking garbage um yeah they are the let's see here so i don't want to freak you out but i i cannot lie that repeats so who's holding the drugs fellow kids who's holding the drugs i don't want to freak you out but i cannot lie here, I got a song. All right, what song is it? Like uh, I'm a rebel, just for, it, like the 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 way it's the way it's delivered sounds a lot like it, like the the line. Uh, no. Yeah, I was a teenage teenager. Lyrically, is like the same anger of Green Day's um, discography, as far as I know. It is. I, I wouldn't even say that because Saint Anger has at least some redeemable aspects to it. Like, if I like the me. song itself. Ye, ye true, but there's nothing so, redeemable about I was a teenage teen. It's like, also the it, longest song on the album. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of like the instrumentation of I was a teenage teenager because it sounds like a Green Day song, but even that is tenuous. Anyway, the reason so I when we did American Idiot, I just said I asked you to do the bonus track version. Did you listen to the bonus tracks? I did not. I did. Okay, so the three that I we were going to include were Too Much Too Soon, um, Shoplifter, and Governator. And the reason I wanted to do that because those three songs, kind of just being whatever, they're from different places. I'm sure they're just bonus tracks, right? But all three of those songs are better than anything on Father of All. Uh yeah, I think I think I, I think I have listened to them one time in the past. I'm like, ah, oh, this isn't really like an idiot. It's alright. Governator is like just a full, you know, a 
piss take on Arnold Schwarzenegger running for governor again. Um, what there is about shoplifting. It's a, it's a little punk ditty about that. And Too Much Too Soon is actually really good and was going to be on... Um, I don't know if you know about the, the canceled album that came before American Idiot. Yeah, they had all the uh, their masters stolen, the cigarettes of Valentine's. Yeah, apparently Too Much Too Soon was from those. Yeah. That was like one they saved for some reason. But yeah, it was really solid. So I was really curious now what that album's going to sound like. But that's neither here nor there. Yeah, there, oh, there is a, there's actually a, like a fan conspiracy theory that album was never lost, and they just thought it was hot trash, so they faked it being stolen for publicity. Yeah, but then they also, also at the same time in 2003 they released an album under the name The Network called Money Money 2020. Yeah, you mentioned that while I was asleep. I mentioned a couple hours ago in the chat. Um, it it seems really interesting. It's like a I think it's like a new wave album. People theorize that the songs were actually those songs, which doesn't really make a lot of sense because Green Day was pop punk and this is like a new wave thing, which now knowing what Green Day is, maybe that makes sense, but I don't I don't know if I buy it's it. Fourteen songs and all of them are explicit. Yeah. But you know, when this all is being stolen and there's all this stuff about, you know, taking a break after warning, not selling super well. They still released an album. It just wasn't Green Day. Yeah. This whole story about cigarettes and Valentine's, you know, doing whatever, whatever. And they just salvaged what they could, I guess. And I guess some of those songs are also on Trey. Hmm. I, I have no idea. I stopped really paying attention to um, the uh, 21st Century Breakdown. Let's see, it's not like say it. Teenage Teenager, I was talking about how it's a pop-punk song, but it's like Luca Brasi can make that kind of song, I feel like. Yeah. It's nothing, like, this, the thing with these songs, I think, is like American Idiot is very artistic. It's very curated. It's a thing that Green Day can do. It's very specific mm-hmm. to them. Father of all motherfuckers, none of those songs are anything special. Anybody could do them. Yeah, like, I think I could take a shit on a Casio keyboard and come up with something like Graffitia. I did not Fire Ready Aim being an NHL theme is, like, the perfect, like, thing for that, because it is so generic and so forgettable, but you can kind of recognize it that, yeah, sure, put it on the NHL. Yeah. They want to be clocks um, for Coldplay, but clocks is just like a, like a, you know, a magical moment. Everywhere. What else do I have? Um, no, "Stab You in the Heart" was the Elvis song. That's what that was. Yeah, that was like, like, did Trey Cool do that one too? Because Trey Cool seems to be the one driving a lot of that throwback stuff. Is he? Uh, he wrote "Rock and Roll Girlfriend." The lyrics to shoot. Bad. Though. Last song, "Graffiti." I was just like, is this of Montreal? Did Montreal go Green Day? Because that's what that sounds like. It's like it's not even like a good of Montreal song. I think Kevin Barnes would make it better. Oh hell yeah! I I, I think I think there's potential for there to be a decent album. It just needs to be reworked. reworked. I don't know. Like I really. I'm curious about the idea of this is like some kind of contractual obligation that they had to do. Like, I don't know, because they, cause they're really positioning it as some kind of comeback for them, which I don't know if I agree with. But like, everything here is so not great. You know, the best yeah. song on here is a song that I think sounds like Green Day, but is shit. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's a complete stylistic change. It's not, it's not like pop punk. It's like kind of weird indie rock that's not good. Like stylistic changes aren't bad. Like you can do that and be good and try different things. Up Montreal makes their whole career off that, you know. Kevin oh, yeah. Barnes goes with the new sound all the time. But but of Montreal, 
you know, there's still a distinctness, there's still a sound that he keeps, Kevin Barnes, that, you know, is consistent at least. And you can see the progression in the albums, but here it really feels like they went backwards from American Idiot. Yes. What else did I say? Oh, Junkies on a High? Remember that song? I listened to the album a couple times. Nothing nothing stuck. Well, nothing sticks. Junkies on a High, my notes are like, I could see this in a commercial trying to be hip. Um, I think the songwriting would have matured with age, you know? If appealing to teens is your thing, great, but this song has big dad energy. Big dad, yeah. So, you? Sandals and socks, just yeah, cargo yeah. shorts, wearing a tucked in life. We're so hip, we're going to play the video game awards. Yeah. A sugar youth, my notes here are good. Um, they talk about um, they never fucked the prom queen. Um, Billy Joe Armstrong is nearly 50. Still talking about never fucking the prom queen or whatever the fuck that is. Sure. Yeah. Great. And then they um, they uh, steal a bit from She's a Rebel also in that song. It's a little bit of a, a callback to that. Just enough for you to recognize it and they just make you think about a, an album that's a lot better and then they just kind of take it away from you again. Yeah. Meanwhile, American Idiot is all about giving a fuck. It's about being socially yeah. conscious and trying to make a statement. This feels like the most like statement making whatever that I've I've ever seen. You can, like you said, it's the most punk thing they've ever done. Not giving a shit. Yeah. Not following through with what punk's supposed to be about. We don't even talk about punk being political. Yeah, and it's just, there's nothing. There's nothing political in here. Yeah. Like that's a, that's like a big definition for me for uh, in order for something to be like uh, uh, like I, for me to consider it like punk and not like garage rock it has to be like inherently political. Okay. And like the politics in American Idiot are what they are. They're generally agreeable, but it's 2004. It feels a lot quaint looking now back at it because of how how much has happened since then. Oh yes. <laughs> So, you, I don't know, you think that Green Day would be all back in the saddle with that stuff. I guess I haven't really listened to Revolution Radio enough, but I don't think it's like that. I don't think it's enough of that. I, I haven't listened to it. It's also the it. first album that has a second guitar player, uh, like, officially. I think Uno Dos Trey, they did. They were um, four. Four as well. Maybe not. I don't know. You could be right. There's like a whole thing going on. I'm looking at the track list again for American Idiot. Oh man, there's so many just memories associated with all these songs. I had a crush on a boy in high school yeah. and um, he had a band and they just took the name from Are We The Waiting. So a lot of memories there. Holiday, the best song on the album for me. There's so many memories of fucking grinding around Tony Hawk. Yeah, American Way. Uh, Giving Novocaine is incredible, too. Like the guitar riff in that song, when it drops out, and they're in the, the chorus, it just really feels like your your whole world's dropping out for a second and then coming back to you. It's a lot of great moments. like A lot of really interesting you know, like musical decisions and choices. I think throwing Wake Me Up in September ends on American Idiot is such an interesting choice because it's so personal. Billy Joe, you know, about his dad dying when he was 10. And for an album that's all about this story, you can, you can kind of throw in Wake Me Up as kind of like the, the moment where you come home and nothing's the same again. Sure. That's, you know, it's a it's a bold choice. And it works. Yeah, it, it, it definitely is. What's her name? I would like to mention one of my my one gripe with American Idiot. Like half the songs are double songs for whatever reason. That's the that's the digital version that has all the extra gotcha. stuff on it. Yeah. 
weird, uh, but it, they also like fit together. Like they all naturally flow into each other. So I guess I get it. Yeah, it's a it's a, it's supposed to be like a concept album. The whole thing is just supposed to be like this punk rock opera, as they, free. and um, it works really well. Got on Broadway. Yeah, that has songs from Twenty um, First Century Breakdown too. I think that was a weird bridging moment. Which sure, sure, yeah. They need more songs to make a story out of it because the story is, you know, not super great. Mm-hmm. But the ideas and the themes are at least interesting. Look at Father of All, and it's like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> like the, yeah. the most interesting stuff they've done is calling it Father of All Motherfuckers and then reusing the American Idiot cover. There's nothing else. And recently, they did show that they could do good album covers. Have you seen <clears throat> the the Xmas Time of the Year um, art? I'm not saying that. I am screenshotting it and uh, dropping it in the Discord. Like, it's a much better album cover than uh, Father of All's cropped American Idiot. That's really cool. And that's that fucking unicorn. How about that? Yeah, it's their, it's their unicorn. But it, like, looks like an actual album. Mascot 30 years in? Sure, whatever. Let's do that. Yeah. Green Day, again, like the adolescents, are kind of like that garage band that you make with your teenage friends, and then you become successful when you go on and on and on for years and decades and decades. And whereas adolescents still made albums, no one really cared. Green Day is one of the most successful you know, musical acts of all time. Their albums still chart pretty well, except for Uno's Dos uh, Trey, I think. Uno Dos Trey, I think. Um, like, 21st Century Breakdown hit the charts. American Idiot hit the charts. I think Father of All got a good amount of attention this year, too. It's like... Mostly <laughs> negative, I think, but still, uh, attention's attention. There, there were a surprising number of positive reviews that I saw, and I'm like, what the fuck are you listening to? Are we listening to different albums here? Um, even then, I don't know what else Green Day has to say anymore. I don't know what else Me they're going to. I think, I think they, I think they've done everything they can. Yeah, like this is. You know, they have other side projects, and they have a million other things they can do. Like they have a a cover band now called the Cover Ups. They can just go and do that now. Yeah, just go full dad rock. Yeah. Be the new fucking, I don't know, Johnny Cash and just do a bunch of cover albums. Imagine Green Day doing some AFI. They probably make it sound super generic now, but back then, it'd be super cool. Yeah. I mean, Amer- I mean, American Idiot is clearly just the, the, the superior album. It's not even really a versus. It's just like, hey, remember Green Day? Remember when they could do good things? Well, here's a new thing that they did, and it's not super great. Yeah. It's kind of a disappointment, and we're just kind of bitching about it because I've been disappointed because I was actually kind of looking forward to it because I was like, okay, finally, this is going to be their comeback. They're going to be great. They're going to prove everybody wrong. It's the perfect time to come back with a new album that reaches people, and it's nothing like that. Maybe that's on me. Maybe I was expecting too much, and they just want to put an album out there that's just not giving a fuck because who the fuck cares? I um, I really wasn't expecting because of uh, the Uno Do Trace and uh, the Revolution Radio were just kind of generic. So my my expectations were low, but holy fuck. LSD, Wolf Parade, and this, I think, are the worst albums we've listened, we've, we've listened to. feel about that, but... It's definitely up there. Like, Wolf Parade was just generic to the point of, like, being blundery, just passing through one ear and out the other. Not terrible musically, but, like, you don't fucking know nothing, anything about nothing it. Nothing stuck around. 
And this has shades of that, but it's they're just a weird combination of being generic and coming from a storied band like Green Day. Just being a weird experiment like LSD. There's, yeah, there's just, uh, it's a bad album. There's not much else I can say. And the Boulevard of Broken Dreams won the Grammy for Best Song of the Year, basically, or whatever. I, I did not. Uh, 21st Century Breakdown and American Idiot both won the Grammy for Best Album, I believe. Yeah, they were, they were good albums at the time, I used to. The Broadway version of American Idiot won a Grammy, even. And I think Dookie. I, no, I Dookie, haven't listened to that. Dookie also won. I mean. And then, like, yeah. This amazing, like, 15-year span of stuff that people really like and that, you know, you could talk about before Dookie and, you know. All other stuff, maybe not people don't like Nimrod as much, or they don't like Warning as much. Sure, sure, sure. 15 years after American Idiot, though, something something's changed. Yeah. Uh, and, like, people always talk about how, oh, when artists go to rehab, they lose all their edge. And I don't think that's that's true, or it shouldn't be true. But... I, don't know, I don't know what else is going on in their lives. I don't claim to know maybe they're just in a different place they've gotten older they have families it's just not the same anymore they've lost their punk edge because of all that because they got so much fucking money yeah, now yeah. They're, they, they are the one percent music world they are the one percent so yeah all they can do now is write dad rock and just show up at random places and perform a couple songs that nobody's gonna care about in five minutes if I'm going to be honest, they have the making. They could they could slowly turn into the most punk rock thing ever and just stop giving any semblance of a fuck. Like, I want Billy Joe to just start wearing a stained wife beater, uh, flip-flops, and sa- flip-flops and socks, and just kind of, like, waddle out in sweatpants. You like and a Bob Dylan thing? Playing, and just start playing dad rock, like, full-blown dad rock. They just start covering Bon Jovi as well. Yes. <clears throat> like the- it, would, it would make an interesting story if that was really their plan and really their you know anything. But I I don't know. Is that even are they even capable of having a plan like that now? Are they just too comfortable? I I, I don't even I don't even know. I I would like to mention um I. W- I was, I was playing Rock Band, or not Rock Band, um, Rock Smith, the one where you play like a real instrument. I was playing um, X Kid because it was on there, and I'm like, oh, what the hell? I haven't really heard any of the new Green Day. Let's hear it. Uh, baseline for X Kid is literally, well, X Kid is just, um, it's literally just Basket Case, but slowed down. You were mentioning that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's. Yeah, that's incredible that they just, yeah, they don't have um going on there. They just repeat and reuse because they can. Yeah. It was, it was interesting looking into American Idiot when they're talking about all their influences, like they're talking about hip-hop influences like Kanye and Outkast, which is incredible to think about in 2004. Definitely. And Lincoln Park was an influence, I guess, on American Idiot, and as well as like stuff like Tommy and all that other rock opera stuff. What was like? What yeah. would influence be on Father of All at this point? Just like whatever the Black Keys are doing. Probably. Uh, Black Keys I don't bad, know at this point. But that's not a Green Day sound. No. There's only only interesting stories too about like how they were writing like thirty second songs and trying to you know kind of cobble those together and that's how we get like Jesus of, of Suburbia and that's how we get Homecoming and then. Our ball is just a bunch of songs that are like a minute or two, and they don't matter much. I don't know. Yeah. I'm going in circles now, so unless we have much else to say, I think we should just cut it off because I'm just going to be sad. 
Yeah, let's let's just kind of end this uh, this episode and just be sad about the Green Day that we lost. And the last thing I'll just say is that the song "Oh Yeah" um, is by way of Joan Jett um, sampling like a Gary Glitter song, which is really weird to do. I think in 2020. Uh, very. Um, yeah. That's 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 another just strange thing. That's not really um, punk of them to do, but maybe they think it is. I don't fucking know anymore. And they're still going to do a tour with Fall Out Boy and Weezer whenever this coronavirus thing is done, I guess. So maybe that'll be a thing. That might, that might actually be worth seeing. I'll play together yeah. and do some of their hits or something. Yeah, but I, I, Green Day, just as a band, unless they just want to be a cover act of their old stuff, I feel it's just oh, no, not many people are going to want to hear the near, the new stuff, to be honest. Like the, I feel like Green Day and Weezer are in very similar price, places now. Yeah. They got music and nobody like really name wants to hear it. The last Weezer album. Is it? Na- na- try and, well, from memory, name the last <clears throat> the last Weezer album. It was like a Teal album, I think. Um, they Yeah, they, they released two last year. They released the Teal album and then they released the Black album. There's one coming this year, I want to say. Uh, Rick Rubin is still doing work, I guess. Um, like they Green have, Day, but... um, Van Weezer is one of their albums, it looks like. That's the thing that's the new their one. Their next album out. is going to be called. Yeah, that, that actually looks kind of kind of interesting just off the cover. Get your hopes up. If it's anything like Father of All, it's not... Uh, I'm... Um... My my hopes are not up at all. Man, some of these album covers are just hot trash. For Weezer. Like, um, Pacific Daydream is pretty cool, I'll say that. But then you get to Hurley. Pinkerton is kind of iconic in its own way. Yeah. yeah. I think that's going to be it for us. Um... I go back and forth about whether American Idiot uses words like fag in a great way. I mean, Billy Joe Armstrong is noted by sexual and all that, but like, eh. It, it's kind of just a product of the time, I'd say. Yeah, it, again, it's very 2004. It's not as timeless as they wanted it to be. But no. for a certain generation, I think that's still slightly older than me. It means even more to them. De- definitely. And that's American Idiot. That is Father of All Motherfuckers. And this is episode... Yeah, we're gonna go drown our brains out. Uh, it's one in a weird direction I didn't really expect. <laughs> so, yeah. That's... Uh, yeah. For this and Waves this time, I'm Dominic. You can catch me on Twitter at D-A-C-I-C-H-O-C-K-I. Um, you can f- go to Dissonant, Dissonant Waves' new website, dissonantwaves.space. Yes. Which is a great domain name. Thank you for procuring that, Trix. No, no problem at all. You can also follow Dissident Waves on Twitter at Dissident Waves. Please follow us. We do make posts occasionally, and uh, we promote our stuff there. Yes. Yeah. Hey, uh, I've been I've been Trix. You can catch me at uh, Procrastronaut on Twitter, like Procrastinating Astronaut underscore. And uh, my YouTube channel, uh, Moonchild, where I'm going to be doing a lot of very bass-centric content soon. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Let's get... Uh... I've been sighing so much. I apologize. This fucking ASMR shit. It's, it's disappointing. But I can... I can...